presentation of HBO Sports. Over the course of 500 years since its discovery, the struggle to bring order to Argentina's 40 million mostly European descendants has proceeded like a 15-round fight. Its progress is marked by the rise of South America's most culturally diverse and sophisticated city, Buenos Aires. But visible even among the city's spectacular architecture and vibrant business climate is the one ever-present opponent Argentina has never fully knocked out. It's grinding and debilitating poverty. Last month, Argentina celebrated a new symbol of its prominence, the installation of a Buenos Aires-bred pontiff at the helm of the Roman Catholic Church. Pope Francis is the first New World Pope, and as such, a powerful representative of new hope amid Latin America's hundreds of millions of believers. Growing up poor in Buenos Aires, Sergio Martinez learned to rely on the strength of his body for deliverance from his own struggle for greater comfort. He flourished as a bicycle racer and then a soccer player before finally entering a boxing gym at the advanced age of 20. Like the new Pope, Martinez traveled the world to earn the chance to be celebrated in the place where he grew up. It is a storybook life which arrives at its climax tonight. In a sold out Buenos Aires soccer stadium, one month after the installation of an Argentine Pope, Sergio Martinez appears to defend boxing's middleweight championship of the world. Don't cry for Sergio, Argentina. The truth is, he has finally come home. Championship boxing tonight. First up tonight from Buenos Aires, our main event as world middleweight champion Sergio Martinez defends his title against unbeaten Englishman Mark Murray. Then we'll fly you to Ontario, California to see the heavyweight showdown between fighting American Fritz Ariola and hard punching Berman Severn. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. Welcome to this highly unusual edition of HBO's World Championship Boxing. Soon I'll be joined at ringside by Max Kellerman and Roy Jones. This is a crazy night. If you follow the listings, you know it was our original intention to come on camera here, then throw you to California, first for the heavyweight fight between Ariola and Stavern, then bring you back here for a terrific welterweight fight between Juan Carlos Abregu of Argentina and Antonin de Carri of Canada, and then the main event between Martinez and Murray. It started raining about 4 o'clock this afternoon in Buenos Aires, and it has been raining off and on ever since, and sometimes very heavily. And as a result of everything that's gone on, we've been forced to change that schedule. We will not be able to show you Abregu versus Decari in its entirety. You'll see highlights of that just a little bit later on. And we're going to show you the heavyweight fight later because we have to begin the evening here in Argentina with the main event between Sergio Martinez and Martin Murray. It's a tremendous homecoming for Martinez, who began his professional boxing career here, later migrated to Spain, then to the United States, has not been seen fighting here in Argentina for 11 years, ever since 2002. He polished his credentials as the middleweight champion last September when he took on then undefeated title belt holder Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. And for 11 rounds, Martinez thoroughly outclassed his rival, putting on a brilliant display of athletic talent and clean punching. But in the 12th and final round, Martinez would be knocked down, badly hurt, forced to hang on for dear life before emerging with a decisive win in the biggest fight of his career. A really rough night for Martinez last September 15. He broke his left hand in the fourth round of that fight 
his knee ligament was torn in the right knee when he went to the canvas in the 12th round. And of course, he had to fight and stand and fight in the last minute of the fight, unable to move, run, or hold, to hold on to his unanimous decision victory over Chavez Jr. But it earned for him the right to do something he's long wanted to do, to come home here and fight in front of this crowd in Argentina. Earlier this week, I spoke to him about the emotional context of the entire journey. September 15, last year, Las Vegas, round 12 against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. What do you recall thinking at the moment that you hit the canvas? Uh, First of all, I have a very somewhat of a confused image of that moment because I was a little groggy, but not so much that I didn't know where I was at that moment in time uh, and what I had at hand. I remember looking at my corner and uh, winking at my corner, kind of telling them, I'm okay, I'm here, I'm in it. Martinez wants to fight his way out. I didn't want to finish the fight moving. I didn't want to finish the fight walking. Uh, I didn't uh, want to just survive. I wanted to end fighting. That's what I did. After the fight, our cameras caught in your locker room, in your dressing room, a moment that was almost like a meditation. It was as though you were drinking in what had happened in the fight. When Chavez fue... You know, the, the fight against Chavez was a fight that was a great emotion, something much bigger, you know, and I, and I bested him. And for that moment in time, it was a, a reflection. It was a moment to soak in the importance of the moment, to see what had happened to me, and that what I had done, that I had beat him, and to assimilate it and to accept it. The groundwork for that emotional September night in Las Vegas was laid a world away. Martinez spent most of his childhood in Claypool, a dusty, impoverished town located on the outskirts of Buenos Aires. As a teenager, Martinez was determined to make his mark in the intensely demanding world of competitive cycling. But that dream was brought to an abrupt and violent halt one day back home in Claypool when armed thugs robbed the then 16-year-old of his prized racing bike. That set off a chain of events that ultimately would change his life. If the bicycle had never been stolen, would the world know you for your greatness today? Surely, surely. It, it was written. It was written and it was my story to write. Sure, for sure. So perhaps it was destiny then that took Martinez from that bicycle to the soccer field, then ultimately to a boxing gym at age 20, while also dictating that after a 2002 bout in Buenos Aires, it would take 11 long years before he would have another chance to fight in his hometown. It became clear that you wanted to come here, that you wanted to fight in your home city of Buenos Aires. Is that a desire which has always been there in your heart, or is that something that came to you recently? It's been some 10 years ago I won a title in Europe. And that's when I started to think in my mind the possibilities of coming and have a fight in a full stadium here in Argentina. That's very interesting, because as recently as two years ago, you talked about how you felt you had been ignored in Argentina. You even used the phrase, they turned their back on me. Uh, at that time, it did not sound to us as though you had a love in your heart for Argentina. Uh, you know, uh, a few years back, um, my fights wouldn't be seen here. And recently, uh, my first fight that was shown here in Argentina was the Paul Williams, the rematch. But up to that point, I was an unknown here in Argentina. And, and so it was somewhat logical that I would have that emotion. It's just somewhat logical. Named Argentina's Athlete of the Year in 2012, Martinez is hardly anonymous anymore. And the expectant local media documented his arrival in Buenos Aires six days ago. Since then, however, he has remained sequestered in his hotel, with even final training sessions taking place in the comfort of his suite all in an effort to avoid potential homecoming distraction. Should we be surprised that you don't seem to have made any special effort to be out in the streets, to meet and commune with your countrymen, to enjoy everything that goes with this rare occasion, unique occasion, coming home? Es que este es el momento de trabajo. Well, it's the moment to work. And if I go out and enjoy the moment and jump the gun, that's not right. <coughs> There's nothing to enjoy at the moment because you haven't achieved anything. Saturday the 27th or the 28th, after that, I'll go out and I'll enjoy it. But for now, we're here to work. And Saturday night, you'll walk into a stadium 
with tens of thousands here to embrace you? Do you want to take a snapshot to remember forever? Or do you want to block that out to focus on the task at hand? I want to enjoy. I want to enjoy every moment, every second that I live during a fight because those minutes are fleeting and they will never repeat themselves in life. This situation that we have Saturday will never be repeated again. No, whether there's 40,000 or there's just one in that stadium, my mind is completely in focus on Martin Murray in winning the fight, and that's it. Now let's look at the tail of the tape for Sergio Martinez of Martin Murray. Martinez is 38 years old. How much longer can he fight in his remarkably physical athletic style? Murray with an eight-year age advantage tonight, a two-inch height advantage. A half-inch arm length advantage measured from the arm bit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in just under the 160-pound middleweight limit. Like so many of the fighters we see, Martin Murray's story is one of redemption. Life hasn't been easy for the undefeated Englishman. He's had four different stints in jail, but his troubled path fades further into the background with each passing day. I trained and done boxing all, all my life, all through my teenage years, and then when I got to 17, 18, got introduced to drinking. You know, I was just a young lad trying to find myself growing up. I unfortunately ended up going to, to prison, mainly just for things like just fighting, just being, I went to the wrong place at the wrong time because it was up to me, you know, it was my fault why I was in them type of situations, but I needed to change my life, otherwise I'd, I'd be doing what I was doing constantly. And then I met Gemma and just dedicated back to boxing. You know, she's been by my side ever since. I've got three lovely kids. My youngest is four weeks, so it's been an exit month in our house with my wife being pregnant, then having the baby. I treat boxing as my job, and um, it's just a way of providing for, for my family and giving my, my family and everything to her. The Felix Stern fight was my first time fighting for a world title, and the, the decision was a bit too close to call to get, to get a win over in Germany and I, I knew that. This fight is a draw. It was a great learning fight for me. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm taking everything from the, from the Stern fight into this one. I know Sergio's a, a, a bigger test for me. I'd always dreamed of fighting for a world title, but now that I'm actually here, I'd, I don't just want to be challenging for a world title. I know I can, I know I can win it and I'll be giving it me all. And there he is. Murray with a record of 25 wins, no losses, one draw. Only 11 of the 25 wins by knockout. Surely the unbeaten record was one qualification that got him here. Was the apparent absence of one punch knockout power the other qualification, Roy? Yeah, I think that definitely was the other qualification. When you bring it up at home, there are so many other pressures lying on you already. Tickets, who are you gonna give tickets to? Where are they gonna sit? I mean, it's just so much pressure that you gotta try to find the easiest way or the easiest task at hand, but still com complete, uh, make it competitive, but a good task. You did this kind of thing many times fighting around your hometown of Pensacola. Is the first time the toughest? Yes, the first time is most definitely the toughest. Max Gellerman, you've seen Martin Murray fight. What are your uh, impressions of what he can do? Well, he's ordinary in certain ways. He's not blazingly fast. He's not a huge puncher, but he's in his physical prime. He's strong. He's big. He's a legitimate lower echelon top 10 contender. And these conditions, a damp ring, uh, fighting a 38-year-old with a, coming off a knee surgery who has to deal with all the pressures you mentioned, these conditions might, in a way, favor him. Martin Murray co-promoted by Ricky Hatton, who has been a popular figure all week here in Argentina. Mike fans couldn't catch a glimpse of Sergio Martinez out and about. He was hidden in his hotel room, but Ricky Hatton was visible in many of the top restaurants around town and remains one of the most popular figures attached to the sport. And Sergio Martinez has turned into a Ricky Hatton kind of draw. We haven't seen a crowd like this, this amped up, this energetic, and this jam-packed in a soccer stadium since Ricky Hatton. I might say it is raining cats and dogs at this moment, even though five or ten minutes ago it appeared that the rain had abated. How big a factor is the environment, the, the heavy rain, uh, for these fighters as they get ready to come into the ring, Lloyd? 
Well, it's a big factor for Sergio Martinez, whereas he doesn't want the surface to get too slippery. Uh, the least of a slip to cause him re-entering his knee. Could that prompt him to take gambles early on? Yes, it could. The crowd with a whistling reception for Murray as he comes in. Saying hello to Martinez promoter Lou Debella. And Debella has been quite frank in saying, I'm worried about my fighter. He's 38 years old. He's had a lot of physical difficulties. This is no left like six. And he's a natural junior middleweight, let's not forget Martinez, who had to move up to middleweight for opportunity, not simply because he outgrew the lighter division. The crowd is not allowing the rain to dampen its enthusiasm. They've been raucously noisy ever since they began to come into this stadium four hours ago. Mark Murray has plastic Thank bags you. wrapped around his sneakers. What it's all about. Keep them dry. dry. And now that he's in the ring, the plastic bags are being removed. So Murray now will await the arrival of Sergio Martinez. And of course, it's poetic that Martinez, who was once a professional soccer player, would fight in a soccer stadium upon his arrival back in Argentina. There are many top soccer clubs around Buenos Aires. We asked Sergio, is this the home of the club that you used to root for? And he said, oh, no, no. No, no, this is not my team. This is another team, their rival, but it will still be fun for me. In a situation like this, where the ring walk is something of a coronation, is this yet another distraction, Roy? Yes, this is another distraction. However, this is a good distraction because it brings you to grip to how these people really feel about you and what they're really expecting out of you. So this is a great distinction. You look at the rapture on Sergio Martinez's face. He's obviously overwhelmed and soaking it all in. A dream come true to be received as a true superstar in his home country after toiling in obscurity for so many years. The prodigal son's return. city, many beautiful buildings, remarkable views, spectacular streets. Martinez didn't touch much of that as a kid. He grew up painfully, desperately poor, and that has been fuel for his motivation throughout his life. Now he has reached the pinnacle of wealth and fame, which he could only have dreamed of through most of his career. The question is, now that he sleeps on some seats, can he still fight like the deprived poor kid that he was for most of his life? Right. After fighting, even in America, on HBO in front of 3,500 people in small rooms, not really being able to connect with a wider audience, it was ironically not until he almost got knocked out against Chavez that he seemed to connect like this. Boxing fans in particular, yeah, you can be a front runner and better than everyone and beat everyone up, but how do you respond when you get knocked down? He got back up and fought and survived and became a superstar in the process. That was the easy part. Now that he's a star, can he stay a star? Can he stay on top? That's the hard part. But he still has an edge. He's well aware of the degree to which that 12th round knockdown and the desperate straits in which he found himself have helped to amplify his stardom. But when I finished my sit-down interview with him the other day, and of course part of the feature piece was built around the difficult circumstances of the 12th round, the first thing he said when the camera stopped rolling was, let me ask you this, how come people don't ever ask me about the first 11 rounds of the fight? Because we knew he could do that. We knew we'd seen it before, but could he do what he did in the 12th? It was an amazing display of championship guts and the will to survive and win. And when you do that, you get a sold-out soccer stadium and fireworks.
well known in Argentina two years ago, could actually fill this stadium. From our vantage point, it appears every single seat is filled. Every single seat, every single standing section, every single everything is totally filled. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, este es el evento principal de la noche, 12 rounds. De boxeo para el campeonato de peso media del mundo de CMB. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. Presentado por Lou de Bellas, de Bella Entertainment y Samson Boxing, en asociación con Hatton Promotions, sancionada por el Federation Argentina de Box, el presidente, señor Carlos Rodríguez, el presidente de CMB, José Suleiman, el supervisor, Mauricio Suleiman. Este evento es patrocinado por Aerolíneas Argentinas y también IPF. The three judges at ringside, los tres jueces de Estados Unidos, Max Doluca, de Venezuela, Nicolas Hildago, y de México, Alejandro Rochi. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, el referee de Italia, Massimo Barravecchio. Y ahora los funcionarios están listos. Los combatientes están listos. Argentinos, estamos listos. Para los miles de asistentes y los millones de personas alrededor del mundo. Damas y caballeros, uh, let's get ready to rumble! In the esquina azul, the blue corner, con su entrenador Oliver Harrison, official weight, 159.6 pounds. Peso oficial 72.3 kilos. Como profesional, 25 victorias con 11 KOs. Y un empate. 25 victories, including 11 knockouts with one draw. He's the fighting pride of St. Helens, Merseyside, England, the WBA interim world middleweight champion, El Retador. El Invicto, the undefeated Martin Power Mary. In the skin roja, in the red corner, con su entrenador Pablo Sarmiento. Official weight, 159.4 pounds. Peso aficionado, 72.3 kilos. Como profesional, 50 victorias con 28 knockouts. Dos derrotas y dos empates. 50 victories, 28 by knockout. Two defeats, two draws. Damas y caballeros presentando el campeón del mundo. Peso medio de CMB. The reigning, defending, WBC middleweight champion of the world, the Quilmes, Argentina, Sergio Maravilla,
Martin. Martin, come here. Remember what I told you in the dressing room. No rabbit punch. No headbutt. No low blow. Check your nets. Good luck. Suerte. Good luck. binoculars to see that Murray is the larger man. He's a natural middleweight. Martinez, as Max Kellerman pointed out, still a natural 154 pounder functioning as a middleweight. But Martinez has greater speed, greater quickness, and greater punching power. Certainly the greater ability to catch his opponent with something he doesn't see coming. And the greater pressure to put on a show for these fans after the show they just put on for him. Martinez scores first with a straight left hand to the chest of Murray. His body punching against Chavez in the early rounds, particularly with the left hand, a tremendous key to the beating he was able to dish out that night. Quillen versus Fernando Guerrero. Garcia, Judah, Quillen, Guerrero. Next, followed by Showtime Boxing Special Edition. Con it seems with every part of his body being a competitive athlete before he ever became a boxer and then having so many fights against top-notch opposition in recent years. Well, as hands, alluded to, he's had a knee surgery since the Chavez fight. His promoter, Luda Bella, hints that there are other surgeries yet to come. 38 years old and fighting in this particular very physical, very mobile athletic style. You wonder how long it can last. Murray with the peak of the defense. Martinez trying to pierce it. Murray, a very good basic fighter. Uses a good jab, good combinations. Stays behind his defense. So it should make for a very interesting night. Martinez has to be content mostly to work to the body in round one as Murray kept the peak of the guard up for much of the round. And then you put your hands in. Okay. You're gonna start playing now. Don't worry. You're gonna turn them off. On the nose, okay? Not 
many punches landed in a pure feeling out first round. Roy Jones, your take. Well, my take is that Martinez was being smart, showing his power early to try to let Martin know that he has to respect the power. And now he's going to try to work his face and see can he open him up a little bit. But Murray, he's just wanted to be defensive, get a feel for what's going on, see what type of chances he's allowed to take. And now he'll try to come out and take those chances. I wonder how much already the presence of this crowd and the reception Sergio Martinez has gotten from them has influenced his style early in that he's dropping his hands right away trying to egg Martin Murray out of his shell because he wants to give them a show. He's a natural showman. Martinez will try to get himself back into a responsible defensive position from this position with the hands down below the waist. And the reflexes won't be there. It hasn't happened yet. No, and I don't think that'll be the case tonight, tonight either. But sometimes, Jim, when you got a guy who fights with his hands high like Martin Murray, you have to show them a target in order to get them to punch it. like everyone else also saw what happened in the Chavez fight late and given Martinez's various injuries they feel that the longer this fight goes the more Martinez is likely to break apart so long as Murray hasn't been broken apart in the process Martinez fainting 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 Murray not fighting on the faint no he's not fighting at all he's very smart Staying very closed in his offense, not opening up too much to give Martinez an opportunity to counter nothing. Martinez with another left hand in the midsection. So far, almost every scoring punch has been a body punch, with the exception of the right hand that Martin Murray landed to Martinez's face in the first round. And that's because of how high Martin, Martin carries his hands, Martin Murray. He has that Winky Wright style of defense. Unlike Winky, he isn't coming forward behind it quite yet. But we've seen Barker do this and Macklin. With it. Keep that guard high and try to punch him between Martinez's lightning shots. Good right hand. hand lands for Murray. And a right hook for Martinez at the end of the round. May 25 at 6.15 p.m. Don't miss Carl Frotch versus Mikkel Kessler from London, England. Later that night, we'll re-air Frotch Kessler in conjunction with a live light heavyweight showdown between Don Pascal and Lucien Boutte. Tell him a little bit more and then go back to what you're doing. Okay? Right, all right. And we need to change tactics a little bit more, yeah. okay? And then go back to our boxing. Okay? You need to catch him with a few head, body, head, body, yeah, yeah. and rough him up a little bit. When you're ready, yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Okay. You saw the copy box numbers from round two. Martinez 10 out of 47. Murray 5 out of 31. The rain is starting to fall very hard again and it's blowing sideways into the ring. So eventually this canvas is going to be fairly damp. Both men, of course, have rubber soles on their boxing shoes. And in the earlier fights we've seen, we have not seen a lot of slipping and sliding and difficulty as a result of the damp conditions. Still, you would think that Murray's style, he's more of a mutter, as they say in horse racing, than Martinez. And you heard Murray's corner wanting him to get more physical with Martinez. Murray being very smart here, not taking a bait uh, from Martinez, not trying to swing at his head big just because his hands are down. So if Martinez wants to have an exciting fight to please the home crowd, 
Murray's going to make him do it the hard way. Yes, he's holding the fire by himself. Exactly. He's not taking any chances. Well, Martinez has that kind of power and speed, and he brings punches from places fighters can't see. So he hurts them. He's very dangerous with one shot. Murray's aware of it. Now Martinez really kept his head still in the middle there for a second run. Oh, good right hand by Murray. Yes. Best punch of the fight so far for the Englishman. Martinez can't bat straight up with his hands down. Well, he's showing some frustration at Murray's defense. And he's trying anything to get him to open up, but he's taking some chances here. He's doing what he has to do to make it entertaining and to try to open Murray up. That'll open him up some body shots like that. Good body shot by Martinez. Now Murray comes back with a left hook body shot of his own. This fight is concluded. We will take you to Ontario, California to see the heavyweight battle between Chris Ariola and Berman Stubber. Bob Papa and Andre Ward standing by at ringside to call that one there. Momentary skirmish. Martinez landed a right upstairs, and Martin Murray got in a body shot. Rain is falling harder than at any time during the night so far. The forecast was somewhat equivocal all day long as to when this would happen. The only thing we knew for sure was that it would happen at some point. <laughs> He's too close up top. Don't, don't stay there with that. You're in third hand. Throw it. Everything's all right? Yeah. Water. 40,000 plus in Jose Amal Patani Stadium here in Buenos Aires getting wet as they watch Sergio Martinez and Martin Murray fighting cautiously through the first three rounds of the fight. In the third round, they threw an equal number of punches and they landed an equal number. Martinez was 10 of 47, Murray was 9 of 46. Overall in the fight, Martinez has landed 27 punches to 17 for Martin Murray. Rain is really coming in sideways now, trenching us and the fighters. I haven't seen rain like this at an outdoor prize fight since Lennox okay. Lewis against Frank Bruno in part of Wales about 20 years ago. That fight ended on a sixth round Lennox Lewis knockout, but he had serious difficulties up to that point. Martin Murray is fighting a very solid, very cautious, very technical fight so far. He just landed a pretty good right hand before Martinez landed a pretty good left hand. to play Matador, but he has a somewhat reluctant pull so far. Right hand by Martinez, good left hand by Murray. Starting to open up and throw a little bit more. Five times. Good go by Murray. Referee Marcelo Martavecchio is Italian, not Argentine. Are from California, Venezuela, and Mexico. So there is no Argentine home court advantage 
among the referee and the scorers here. Here's another look at the low blow. Yo, it's a right hand. Sergio, come on, that left is going in, coming in. Be careful, Sergio, be careful. Be careful when you're close to him. Careful, careful with his hands. Everything okay? Okay, everything's perfect. numbers for the fourth round that showed that for the first time in the fight, Murray outlanded Martinez, landing 12 of 40 punches in the round. And you heard Martinez's trainer, Pablo Sarmiento, cautioning him that he has to be responsible as a defender and not just leave his hands below his weight. So far in Martinez's mature career, when he, things have gotten a little rough like this, he's been able to ratchet w it up to another level athletically. Can he still at 38? Governing body which governs this fight is using open scoring tonight. But the open scoring is not being given to the audience at large, rather just to the corner. Between rounds, they gave the scores. 40-36 Martinez, 39-37, 39-37 also Martinez. So he has a two or three point lead on all three scorecards. Harold, how do you have it so far? Okay, sir. I, I've got it 40 to 36 as well. Sergio Martinez circling and landing an up jab constantly. Just hits him with the up jab all night. Reason, man, you, you know, I think Abad Morris is not aggressive enough. He's got to get off more. Has to throw more punches. The fourth round was close. I thought Martinez won it. And Jim, in case of a controversy, they will go to an instant replay. Now, bear in mind, we may not have any controversy, any controversies tonight. Martinez. Murray landed a good body shot by Harry with the liberal the school. And now's the danger for Murray that he's had some success and he's starting to open up. He'll be more susceptible to Martinez's speed and power. Oh, good oh, right hand. right hand by Murray. Yes, Murray. Underdevelopment in Martinez's career. He's been getting hit considerably more often over the course of the last four or five fights. Once again, their heads come together, and once again, Barabecchio has something to say to both fighters no, no, about no, 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 Okay. Now he wants Martinez to keep him up. Good body shot by Murray. 
Andrew landing the left upstairs while Murray landed the more solid body shot. Big right hook inside by Martino. Murray's having a lot of success with that right to the body in this round. talking about. We can't give him that round. He got him up, but we can't give him that round. We knew that. Yeah. You better? Yeah. Split, John. Yep. Split, 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 split bucket. I'm up. This yeah. side here, mate. <laughs> Estamos tres puntos, dos tarjetas y una cuatro. Tres puntos, dos tarjetas y una cuatro. Arriba, eh? Vamos, seguir trabajando. All right, come on. Just keep working okay. it that way. Okay? Keep working with the hand. And don't hold back. Keep working, Sergio. Everything okay? Okay, good. Breathe. We mentioned that one recent trend in Martinez's career is getting hit more and more. Another has been difficulties in the middle rounds of several fights. He seems to have a tendency to drift in the middle rounds and then turn it on down the stretch of the fight. In the last two rounds, the fourth and the fifth, Murray combined to outland Martinez 25 to 17 with a bunch of tap numbers in those two rounds. Look right here, my bird. Martinez is the middleweight champion of the world. The, li the lineal champ. And usually when the champ fights the 10th contender or the 8th contender or the 5th contender, as Sergio's been doing in recent years, class will tell over time, and he takes over in the second half of the fight. Black, black, black. Black Murray's come Martinez out well here. Might be, I think he might be bleeding outside the left eye. Difficult from our angle to see this at this moment. California and the heavyweight showdown between Chris Ariola and Berman Stiburn. And that is now a full-scale trickle of blood outside Martinez's left eye. Martinez family trying to root their charge on after what appears
appeared to be a difficult round against Murray. Can you see the little head collision? I think that may have caused the cut. Couldn't really see much there. But after that is when he started to rub his eye. So maybe that was a small head cut. That'll be about numbers in the six. That was all Murray. Martinez was 10 of 46. Murray 22 of 60. Landing at a pretty good connect percentage. And Martinez kept motioning Murray in, trying to get him to open up. Murray took advantage and landed several good, clean body shots. Once to the head weren't that bad either. Good hook. Good hook by Martinez. has a very good cut man, Dr. Roger Anderson, from out in Santa Barbara County, California, where Martinez lives and works out in Oxnard, California. Anderson helped us through the Darren Barker fight when Barker broke his nose early in the fight, and it was bleeding and broken, and Martinez made it to the finish line and won the fight. Actually, with an 11th round knockout of Barker, He's been cut over the left eye or around the left eye in three previous fights. So that's nothing new. Sometimes when a fighter is accustomed to being cut, it cuts off. Exactly. A 
about which Vara Vecchio spoke to Murray, but has not yet issued any point deduction of which we know. Well, it's a rough go so far for Sergio Martinez against Martin Murray as we come through the seventh round into the eighth. Well, Martinez is a sportsmanlike fighter, but not everybody adheres strictly to the marquee of Queensberry rules especially in the middleweight division, and here he's finding that out. Good one, two for Martinez. Trying to get himself back in command in the fight. Last two rounds have been very good for Martin Murray. Back, step back, step back. Okay, okay. Martinez using a good right jab, a good stiff right jab. Martinez has struggled in the middle rounds. Once again, he has been knocked to the canvas, just the way Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. knocked him down, and Matthew Macklin knocked him down in his last two fights prior to this. That right hand, he was softened up by a lot of those clean shots to the body and head. And as Martinez has shown more vulnerable, he's gotten more popular. But he's got a win here, and he's in jeopardy of losing. Our Murray fans might be shocked to know that given this governed body's, governing body's open scoring system, the corners get the scores between rounds after the fourth and the eighth. The scores after the eighth, 77-74, 76-75, 76-75, all for Martinez, not for Murray. Harold, how do you have it? <laughs> 
I'm getting 76, 75 Sergio Martinez. But to tell you the truth, Martin Murray's coming on. I mean, he easily won the last three rounds, got an extra point for the knockdown. So, you know, it's a very close fight to this point, but the momentum is with Murray. So Martinez may appear to lead, need a late round rally, and that has been one of his trademarks too. How many late round rallies can a 38-year-old fighter produce? Well, you don't know, but Martin has kept his hands at home a lot this round. Martinez made him use his hands for defense for most of the round, so he hasn't been able to really land any good shots so far in this particular round. That's true, but as a result, Murray is not being hit cleanly, and from time to time, Martinez is. Good body shot there by Martin Murray. Martinez has been more active in the round. I dare the head, the right hand by Murray. And there, another high right hand for Murray. Martinez is blocked, and Murray is not. Ontario, California for a terrific heavyweight knockup between exciting American Chris Ariola, who throws a lot of punches, and hard punching Berman Stiburn. He has one punch knockout power. It's not too bad for excitement here, Jim. versus Kessler, as well as the live 175-pound showdown between Jean Pascal and Lucien Boutte in Montreal. No problem. It's all right. Sergio, move the jab. Yes, Sergio, yeah, move. Move with the jab. Move to the left, Sergio. And don't stay there. Two jabs and finish it off, all right? Double it. The left. Here, here. Come on, it's going on the jab. Come on, Sergio, please. Work the jab, Sergio. Let's go. Albuquerque's numbers again found a significant advantage in the round for Murray. Right now, I can just hear Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. saying, "See, I took everything away from him and <laughs> left him with nothing." And Harold Letterman's scorecard now even as he gave the ninth round to Murray. Even as Three Martinez to go. Even as Martinez was getting hit watch that last round. Watch your head, watch your head, watch your head. Okay, watch your head. You could see he was feeling himself more in that round, getting a little more of a rhythm going and feeling better about himself. things his way from the middle rounds through this point against Sergio Martinez in a fight which is now even on Harold Letterman's scorecard and perhaps on a couple of other scorecards as well. This will come down to Martin Murray's conditioning, Jim. If he's conditioned good, he can make break. for a good finish here. No pants. Break, no pants. Okay, break, no pants.
may appear to be in desperate straits. homecoming and is getting deeper and deeper into trouble against Martin Murray. This is an old school middleweight title. Oh, another hard right hand for Murray. Back. The back. Martinez suddenly taking out. the out in front of the home crowd. Yes, and that knockdown would have made it very interesting had the ref called that a knockdown. Martinez trying to outwork Murray here. He's punching and punching, but he's not because Murray's doing the very simple thing. He's keeping his hands up. Martinez is giving it his all, though. Martin Murray was an opponent and picked by Sergio Martinez, not by his promoter for this fight. <laughs> Sergio might have picked the wrong guy. Open, 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 open up. Come on, breathe now. How are you doing, Sergio? Good, good? Okay, yeah. Drive me off, drive me off. Here you see what Murray landing, a one-two, a short shallow punch, followed by a hook. Then a straight right hand right there, which grazed him. And Mar Martinez went down. Now, it was a grazing shot. Wasn't the best of a punch, and it could have been the feet work, the footwork that got tangled up that caused him to go down. Martinez is so good at moving his head that he complained earlier in the fight that Murray hit him on the back of the head. But that should be ruled a knockdown. Yes. Because the only reason it landed on the back of the head is that Martinez was moving his head. Exactly. The only possible reason that wasn't a knockdown, and our camera angle did not show it, could have been that Murray's foot was on top of Martinez's foot, and the referee chose the ruler to slip for that reason. Power punches in the last three rounds. Martinez has landed 20. Murray has landed 52 by CompuBox count. Sergio Martinez has produced late round magic in his career. Had trouble with Matthew Macklin, knocked him out the 11. Had trouble with Darren Barker, knocked him out the 11. He's having trouble with Martin Murray. With Martin Murray, Jim, and it's the 11. Martinez won that round. It could have been.
been useful medicine at exactly the right moment. But we've got a fight which appears to be on the table going to the 12th. Murray's the guy who's done the punishing. Serge does the last one. Work, work and move, move, move. Work and move. All right, Sergio. Verbal work. Which hands? Left hand. Left hand hurts a lot. That's on, Martin. Fight for your life, mate. It's all here now. 12th last round. Martin, everything. Pick your kids up. Come on, mate. Deep it. Stand up for me. You'll change your life forever, mate. Be careful. Try and get a snap shot. Bing, bing. Stop letting him do that. Well, you heard the discussion of a potentially damaged left hand in Martinez's corner. And he fought from the fourth round on against Chavez with a broken left hand. Off your box numbers in the 11th. Martinez 16 at 62. Murray 14 at 52. First time that Martinez has outlanded Murray since the seventh round. And the middleweight championship of the world looks like it's up for grabs at the moment. Martinez fought with the broken hand against Chavez, tore a knee ligament the 11th, had a surgery in Spain. May have another surgery coming up. But there are no excuses when you opt for an occasion like this. When you choose this kind of show, there are no excuses. Two minutes left. Who wants it more? Good body shot by Martinez. Sticking the left hand into Murray's belt. Trying to do it again.
Martinez credit for winning the 11th and 12th and pulling out the fight by a single point over Murray. Remember, it was Murray who got the knockdown point when he knocked Martinez down in the ninth round. There was the second incident in which Martinez appeared to go to the canvas as a result of a Murray punch. We thought it could have been ruled a knockdown. The governing body which sanctions this fight is using instant replay to their great credit. They looked at the replay and decided to agree with the referee that it was a slip. I have no comment. Harold, very quickly, very quickly, tell us the judges who are scoring the fight. Okay, Jim, the three judges scoring the fight uh, Max DeLuca, one of my favorite judges from California, as you see at the uh, Roberto Guerrero, Andre, uh, Andre Berto, does a good job all the time. Nicholas Hidalgo, that doesn't correct as Venezuela. He works a lot outside the country, doesn't work much inside the country. I hope he'll do a good job. Alejandro Rochin, an outstanding judge, comes to Chula Vista, California. He always works, you know, in Mexico and in California. Works a lot. Good judge. All right, let's go to Michael Buffer and find out how they scored it. Thomas Caballeros, ladies and gentlemen, we go to the judges' scorecards. Los tres jueces, Alejandro Rochin, Max Deluca, y Nicholas Hildago, scores. 115, 112, 115 to 112, all three cards. The winner, the Gilmes Argentina School, WBC middleweight champion of the world, Sergio Maravilla. You see he winds up with a 26 punch edge in landed punches. He throws 43 more and winds up with a significantly higher connect percentage in the fight than Sergio Martinez. Our punches, an even bigger edge for Murray. Landing 41 more, throwing 60 more, landing at a 6% higher percentage. Again, he bunched a lot of that into the rounds, into the rounds between the fifth and the 10th. In the first four or five rounds, Martinez was in control. In the last two rounds, he swept them on all three scorecards to win the fight. And there are the punch zone numbers that show you where the punches landed for both Murray and Martinez. And you see how Murray was able to use both his right and left hands upstairs, landing 107 punches in the area of the head. Martinez. A lot of right hooks. The right hook was by far his best punch in the fight. And you heard the discussion in Martinez's corner about a damaged left hand. His promoter, Lou DiBella, has come over to us since the fight ended and pointed to the right knee, indicating that Martinez may have damaged the knee again. You fight on a rainy night in a wet rain, and you run the risk of having more injuries. Yeah, you do. That slipping rain, you do would cause some problems, so that was definitely gonna be a factor once we knew the rain was gonna reside tonight. He needs water. He needs water. And now let's water. go to Max Kellerman with the winner and still the middleweight champion, Sergio Martinez. Sergio, congratulations. 
before we even get to the fight. What was this like in front of 45,000 cheering Argentines? Lo más espectacular de toda mi vida, lo más maravilloso, lo más hermoso que pude haber vivido en toda mi vida. It was the most fantastic thing, the most marvelous thing I could have ever experienced as a sportsman. Did you feel added pressure to put on a show for these fans? Fighting with your hands down from the very first round. No, no, no sufro presión. La presión a mí me hace sentir más fuerte. De hecho, hoy subí a divertirme. Y, y así lo hice. Me, me golpeé la mano muy feo, la mano izquierda. Me duele muchísimo. Una fisura, una fractura. No pressure, no pressure. I build with pressure. I enjoy pressure. And I wanted to have a great show. But today, I hurt my hand, I hurt my left hand. And I might be broken. What does it mean, do you think, that for the second consecutive fight, you kept the middleweight championship of the world by doing what you had to do in the 12th and final round. Es quedarme un poquito más en la memoria de todos y escribir un poquito más fuerte mi nombre en la historia del boxeo mundial. It burns my name in the people's memory and it makes my name even greater in boxing history. Did you think the fight was up for grabs in the 12th round? No, no, sabía que yo iba ganando, a pesar de que me dolía mucho la mano, a pesar de que sabía que caí en el octavo, sé que iba ganando la pelea con, con claridad. No, I knew that I was winning, I knew that I was winning clearly, but I, I, was, my head was hurting since the eighth round. Okay, you're 38 years old and you finally become a big superstar, but you're coming off knee surgery. You hurt your hand again tonight. It was a very rough fight. What is in your immediate future? El futuro es trabajar para recuperarme, pero pero las superestrellas somos así, nos recuperamos siempre ante todo. We have to work to get better, but the superstars are like that. We always get better against any odds. Thanks, champ, and congratulations once again. Thank you, and um, viva Argentina. Jim. All right, back live at ringside with Roy Jones. First of all, where does it rank among the events you've seen and experienced? Well, it's one of the biggest events that I've seen in a long time. The fireworks were wonderful. Argentina was wonderful. But my hat does go off to Martin Murray because Martin Murray put up a one courageous fight. If that fight, that round, that knockdown would have been called a knockdown, we could have had a draw here, Jim. So Martin Murray's going to go back and be pretty upset with himself that he didn't put out a little bit more in those last two rounds. But Montevilla did a great job for his fans. He did what he had to do to make it a wonderful event. He kept trying to make it a fight, and I think my hat goes off to both guys. They put on a wonderful show. Maravilla gets the victory, which may be open to question in the minds of some people, but clearly this is a 38-year-old middleweight champion who is leaking oil, fighting injuries, and looking down the road at fights against bigger, more physical forces, forces possibly a rematch with Chavez Jr., possibly Gennady Golovkin somewhere on the horizon. What must he do to get back to being Maravilla? Well, he has, he has to take a little time off. I know he's 38 and he don't have a lot of time, but he got to take a little time off to let those injuries fully healed. As he sees, every time he has an operation or whatever it is, he comes right back and tries to fight again, and the same things go down again. When you get older like that, those injuries are harder to deal with. So he has to go give himself time for the injuries to heal properly, then come back. And by the way, we'll certainly see Murray again. Now we want to remind you, stick with us, because we're going to be going to Ontario, California, for the heavyweight fight between Chris Ariola and Berman Stavern. And now let's go to Max Kellerman with Martin Murray. All right, we're standing in a ring that feels like it's about to collapse from the humanity on the other side of it. Tremendous performance out of you. Do you who do you think won that fight? I know it wasn't enough uh, to get the decision in Argentina. Um, yeah, when the final bell went, and I knew we just got it. It wasn't, it wasn't that, that, um, that why did it think, but it, it won third and square, it wasn't enough. You were the guy who was doing the clean landing and the punishing of your opponent. And yet, just like in the Sturm fight, we're hearing from you afterwards, I don't think I did enough to win clean in the other guy's hometown. What was the difference in the 12th round? Um, it, I, I never needed a big round. Um, I went out trying to push it, he caught me. I'll have to go back and watch it at home. He caught me and uh, he, he was just having me I've been at range with his jab, but I was on him, I was on him. The second time I put him down, it didn't class it a knockdown, it was a knockdown, but 
once again, Sergio's a great fighter and a great champion. And he come back and dug deep again, and you know, that's off to him in fair play. Martin Murray, congratulations. A thrilling fight and a tremendous performance. Hope to see you again soon. Yeah, thanks a lot. There's, there's more to come from me and my team yet, but a massive thank you to my trainer, Oliver Addison. We put in graft all the time. Manager Neil Marsh, my wife, Gemma, my kids at home, my support, and my, uh, all the support I've got at home, and especially Town of St. Helens. Sorry it won't be enough, but I'll do it next time. Good fight. Thank you. All right, so Martin Murray has to settle for a draw with Sturm on Sturm's home turf in Germany. He comes to Argentina and loses a decision to Martinez. Let's hope that Murray fights the next time on his own home court in England to put another win on that record. Meanwhile, earlier on this card, a welterweight fight which we had expected to show you live tonight, but because of the rain and the changed circumstances here in Buenos Aires, we're not able to do so. You saw Antonin Descari of Montreal, and then you saw Juan Carlos Abrac Abrigu, who is from Salta, Argentina. And they fought a spirited 12-round battle. That was a hard right counterpunch at the end of the third round by Descari. And then in the sixth round, another good shot by Descari that ended the round. But in the seventh round, Abrigu began to take over with his hard punching physical style. And then in round eight, a lot went on. An over the top right hand by Abrigu, his primary weapon, and Dekari went down. Dekari actually went down twice from that shot and then got up, continued to fight the rest of the round, but took a physical beating from Abrigu. And that was a, an error by the referee who thought that the round had ended on the clapping of sticks that said there were 10 seconds left in the round. That was a break for Dekari that allowed him to continue in the fight. Abrigu, who pressed for the knockout in the late rounds, couldn't get it, and won by unanimous decision. He's 35 and one, he's got 28 knockouts. You're gonna be see him, seeing him as an exciting player in the welterweight division still to come. Meanwhile, let's look ahead to what's upcoming here on HBO Sports.